Yeah. And we continue now with our Great American panel. All right, uh, James O'Keefe, remember him and Hannah Giles, they go into the Acorn offices. They got great videotape. I thought, they, I thought in that instance they did a terrific job. Anyway, uh, federal officials have charged four men plotting to tamper with the telephone system in New Orleans. This didn't smell right from the beginning the way liberals were going after him. There seems to be another side of the story. James O'Keefe is going to be on this program on Monday evening. But he did release a statement today. I want to put it up on the screen. He said, the government has now confirmed what has always been clear. No one tried to wiretap uh, or bug Senator Landrieu's office. I learned from a number of sources that many of Senator Landrieu's constituents were having trouble getting through to her office to tell her that they didn't want her uh, taking millions of federal dollars in exchange for her vote on the health care bill. In investigating the matter, we decided to visit Senator Landrieu's district office, the people's office, to ask the staff if their phones were working. On reflection, I could have used a different approach to the investigation, particularly given the sensitivities that people understandably have about security in a federal building. So there's, a, there's a fine line between journalism and criminality. <laughs> uh, you know, here's the story. Mm -hmm. Going, confronting or, or invading uh, an Acorn storefront is a little different from going into a building that's secure. A federal that's building. a federal building that has security there. And I don't know the facts. I don't think any of us know the facts. That's the key. I mean, See? everyone's jumped to conclusions right. here. I think unfairly, but interestingly, he makes a good point. Is this the people's seat? If they're claiming publicly that the phones aren't working, does he have a right to go ask? I'm going to wait and see what turns out here. O'Keefe may yet be, have everything dismissed. It, it could happen that way. I do believe, however, that the left is going to use it to go after our friend Andrew Breitbart because big government and bigjournalism.com are the effective. biggest. They're, they are very, very dangerous for the left because he deals in right, facts. But from a legal in, in, standpoint as a lawyer, I want to ask you this. Is maybe the mistake that they made that they might have gone into that office misrepresenting themselves as repairmen? 28 right? U.S.C. 1001 False Statements Act. There are a thousand ways to get people when they're screwing around so with the So if they want to get him, you think they, they could? Him. Especially this that's the heart you of think this. so? Oh yeah. If they want to get them, they'll get them. Trust yeah. me. Well, well, I've been there, done it, and bought yeah. the T-shirt. Sir, when you said there's a fine line between journalism and criminality, no, there's a huge mm. line and a huge difference. When James O'Keefe was on Happy Happy mm. Hour, I praised him for the work that he did in mm. cracking down on Ac Acorn and fraud with our government so I dollars. I However, I also took him to task for calling himself a journalist because I cannot go as a journalist. I would not. It's unethical as a journalist to it's lie to you, a, to lie to you, or to a, dress it's up a, it's and investigative lie reporting. that I was somebody. Even minute, the best investigative reporters should not lie oh, okay. to who they you mean, are. You mean or so Dayline NBC, impersonate somebody. NBC, I'm just saying that if somebody here that attracted at all of those perverts that, yeah. in, so they were wrong? Well, they were working with law enforcement Wait a minute, on wait a minute. That. No, oh, it's okay for what them I'm to do it. What I'm saying is I don't agree with um, the, the, his tactics. I mean, try to do it another way. That's fair. Great with what he's doing. But do not go to uh, Actually, no to a, a lawmaker's office. Minutes. Sixty minutes. I was going to say that. Don't go to a lawmaker's office and say, right, yeah, a that's that's and say that you're a terrible repair person. That's a lie. Tim Tebow, Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback for uh, University of Florida, and his mother will appear in a pro-life commercial, and apparently for Focus on the Family, and they're already attacking. The ad Left and wants to censor, and Tim Tebow is an American hero. He's an inspiration to young men and young yes. girls. He, we need lots of Tim Tebows. Kurt Warner announced his retirement today, one of my favorite players, and, and Tim Tebow is as out there with his Christianity as Kurt Warner is. He lives a great life. He goes to prison. He, he is an ambassador for everything. That's such a great thing. The idea, <laughs> no, to, to talk to people <laughs> yeah, about right. yeah, turning their <laughs> lives around. He's just a great yeah. American, and the idea that lefties want to but shut him down issue. is the outrageous. Issue is, the issue is whether this ad should be shown on the Super Bowl. Why not? You pay no, the no, freight. No, no, it's three million bucks. And let me tell you something. Uh, it's like it's like putting a Hooters ad on the Christian Broadcasting Buddy, Network. It is not. Yeah, it is. It, it is. is not. It is. Oh, the on. only time we they have religion at the Super Bowl that. is when you're betting, when you're praying to God that your team makes the po point that spread. Peyton throws Make, that final right. that's, what, that's the only religion that. there. Last well, word. They're selling that, Doritos. The other side <laughs> should, you know, counter and show their there ad. I mean, they could. But I, I also think it's the wrong but, audience. It's mostly right. men you know, watching, and the final decision rests with the woman. That three million dollars. They could use that for such good purposes. Other. In the 30 second out of the lives. That's what I mean. They could do it. Coming up.